Today we're going to talk about the scientific benefits of, of honey. Has it been shown in evidence-based research to be just as good or more beneficial than pharmaceuticals for various health issues? Hey everybody, Chad Cruiser here with Health and Homestead. Now going back through history, we see that the ancient Assyrians used honey. We saw that the Egyptians, the Greeks, the Romans, and the ancient Chinese all used honey medicinally. It's probably the oldest sweetener known to man. And let's look at some of the research. One of the fascinating things about honey is that it has a nearly perpetual shelf life, meaning they have found honey dried in ancient Egyptian tombs. And what they've discovered is that after thousands of years, even though it's dried out, it's still edible. And that is an unusual property for any kind of food substance to have. The first study we're gonna talk about is honey on prostaglandins. Now, what are prostaglandins? Prostaglandins are a hormone-like substance in our bodies that is associated with pain. In certain situations, the more prostaglandins you have, the higher amounts of pain. Let's look at prostaglandins and honey. A small study was done on 12 healthy people, nine men and three women, aged 25 to 48, and they were to consume 1.2 grams per kilogram of honey in 250 milliliters of water daily in the morning after 12 hours of not eating. And it turned out that there was a lowering of prostaglandin levels in those who consumed natural, unprocessed honey. Now we know that prostaglandins can be associated with PMS issues. Now what happens when honey is put head to head with a standard pharmaceutical agent for PMS symptoms? Dysmenorrhea, also known as painful menstruations or PMS symptoms, is common in around 80 to 97 percent of women of childbearing age. A common drug used in menstrual period pain is methanemic acid, which is a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. Researchers investigated head to to head methanemic acid with honey in a crossover trial. Now, one of the things I love about crossover trials is that what they do is they take a substance, in this case, a pharmaceutical, methanemic acid, and they put one group of people on that. Then they have another group of people who go on the honey in this situation. And so they both do this for a time period to see the impact of these two substances. Then what they do is they switch the people to the other substance to see how it will impact them. They put 56 female students into two groups, one group would start with the pharmaceutical and the other with the honey. Then they would switch to the opposite substance. There was no significant differences in the amount of pain. And they conclude that honey is just as effective at combating PMS symptoms as methanemic acid. And as you know, in most cases with various pharmaceuticals, there are often side effects. And so with honey, you're likely to avoid side effects that you might have on a certain drug. But what about when these women get older and get to the point where, well, their period starts to go away and they go through menopause? Here's research in the journal Molecular and Clinical Oncology, and it reveals that compared to placebo, either honey or bee pollen have a benefit when it comes to lowering menopausal symptoms in breast cancer patients. Now you might be saying, okay, Chad, this was in breast cancer patients. How about for women without breast cancer? Does it work for them? And the answer is, I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure if a study has been conducted on that. I haven't found it yet if there is. And so hopefully, maybe. Uh, and the truth is that if you tried it out for yourself, if it works for you, great. Likely it will have very few side effects anyway. So could be worth a try. Our next study is looking at research on pain and a tonsillectomy. Now, for a number of years, scientists believed that various portions of the body were vestigial. And so they looked at part of the body that they didn't know what it was used for, and they just said, oh, that's not necessary anymore. We've evolved past that. And later on, we found out, no, actually, it did have a purpose. You just didn't happen to know what it was. And that, that's the case with the tonsils. Now, historically, they didn't know what they were for. And so if they got a little swollen or something went wrong, they just cut those things out. Now, it's not very common today to have that done, but what happens when they used honey after a tonsillectomy? Research was conducted using either honey or placebo on patients after having a tonsillectomy. Those who took the honey had less pain on the first post-operative day, and they ended up having 
having a more rapid recovery in the first two weeks compared to those who took a placebo. And this is fantastic that something as simple as honey, which obviously has antimicrobial properties may be beneficial in the healing from something like this. Now these next two studies I find to be unbelievably incredible. The first one has to do with coughs and upper respiratory tract infections. The British Medical Journal Evidence-Based Medicine reports on something that has been shown to be better than standard pharmaceutical agents that are used to fight coughs and upper respiratory tract infections. The most common reason for a prescription for antibiotics is an upper respiratory tract infection, but the majority of URTIs, these upper respiratory tract infections, are caused by viruses, and since antibiotics are not useful for virus, this method is generally ineffective. And giving it to patients may be increasing antibiotic-resistant pathogens. Some of the standard treatment for upper respiratory tract infections include antihistamines, cough suppressants, and cough syrup. And according to a meta-analysis in the British Medical Journal Evidence-Based Medicine, honey is more effective than standard medical treatments for improving URTIs, these upper respiratory tract infections. And they also state that using honey for URTIs could help lower the spread of antibiotic resistance. This is incredible to think that something that is cheaper, safer, less side effects, something as simple as honey could be more beneficial than the standard pharmaceutical agents that we are using. I mean, this is great. And this is something that's readily accessible to most people around planet Earth. And my wife and I have used honey re repeatedly throughout our lives. And we've in general used just a couple or a few drops of eucalyptus oil in a, in a small jar and heated it up, stirred it up a little bit. And this is something that's worked unbelievably well, but the research shows that it works very well simply, simply with just the honey. This next research I found from Dr. Michael Greger, so I wanna to give to credit to him for that and check this out. Honey and wound healing. Patients that had received plastic surgery had on the same wound covered half with a standard surgical dressing and the other half with a honey dressing. So here are people who would come in for plastic surgery. And obviously after plastic surgery, you're probably wanting to have the wound be as small as possible so that it's not looking like you had surgery, right? And they put on these people the standard medical dressing, surgical dressing that they would normally use. And on part of that, they would put the honey and then they would see, well, which did better. The half that was dressed with honey healed about a third narrower. The study concluded by stating that the aesthetic or the look of the wound could be enhanced by using a honey dressing. Now, as we've already stated, honey has antimicrobial properties. So this is probably part of it. And there may be other things in the honey that help heal the body. And that's why people have used it for thousands of years. And now modern research reveals that, well, it really does work. But what about for canker sores? What happens when you have people put a standard steroid cream made for canker sores or an over-the-counter pain gel put on canker sores or simply put honey on it? Now this chart is staggering. The first group is the red group. And you notice that within four days of applying the steroid cream, these canker sores go away. The blue group is the store-bought cream. And after eight days, the, in general, the canker sores go away. But what happens in the honey group? it takes one day to get rid of your canker sores by simply applying topically honey. Now I know that some of you might be thinking, but Chad, is it safe to put in your mouth? <laughs> okay, uh, probably nobody's actually thinking that. Well, there were no side effects in any of the groups and honey should not be used for babies under one year of age. It can increase chances of infant botulism. Now I've gotta say it is exciting to know that honey has been shown to be potentially better than the pharmaceutical agents used for coughs. It's just as good as drugs that may be standardly used for PMS symptoms. It might be good for healing of, of surgical wounds and maybe healing in general. So this is something that is known to be beneficial. It's been known to be beneficial for thousands of years. I'm gonna have some links down below if you want to check them out, maybe some honey, some different things that you would be interested in. 
And if you like this video, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notifications. God bless and have a fantastic day.